So once again, very good day to you, my dear students. Today we are going to discuss something about uh, introduction to data structures. We will discuss much more about a very short introduction to data structures. And this is especially for you, my dear students and young researchers. This is Dr. Christo Anand, professor, and you can reach me at dr.christoanand at the rate of gmail. So before beginning the session, let me thank God for giving me this golden opportunity. Now you all, please take a one minute silent prayer. As for me, I thank God for giving me this golden opportunity to deliver this useful session, to share my knowledge among my fellow national, international participants, students and young researchers. So today's uh, session will have a short introduction to uh, introduction to data structures and then how algorithms uh, are uh, naturally evolving when opposed to programs and then we'll discuss about the pseudo code, we'll discuss about the specification of data structures, the space as well as the time complexity and uh, the memory usage while execution uh, diff uh, then we will discuss about the different approach to design an algorithm, about the various data structures, abstract data types and design patterns and then we will discuss about the most commonly used popular data structures, we will discuss about the basic operations which are performed in the task and then we will discuss about the binary tree, we will uh, elaborate some details about the binary search tree. We will discuss about heap, the hashing data structure, matrix and finally the tree. Okay, so we will have some independent works also and uh, of course we will have at regular intervals some short videos uh, testing the knowledge in our topics. So here we start with an, with an introduction to data structures. So if you can uh, understand data structure, it is actually uh, a way of organizing data in a computer so that the results you can use it effectively. The key idea or maybe the objective or maybe the master plan is that you reduce the space or maybe you reduce the time complexities of different tasks. So how you try to choose a data structure definitely makes uh, it possible for uh, performing several critical operations. So you can say an efficient or a proficient data structure uses very less memory space okay, and the execution time is you know, very fast enough to process the structure. So here the data structures we can use it in OS's operating system, graphics, computer design and simulation as well. So these are the, uh, this is actually the definition of our data structures and where you try to use the data structures. Teacher. Yeah, tell me. Can you send the uh, user slides uh, you are showing us? Yeah, I'll be sharing this in the Google Classroom, I told you. I'll be sharing the syllabus, I'll be sharing the materials, I'll be sharing okay. the independent works. So by next class you will see everything. <coughs> Understand. Okay. So with data structures, when you try to classify data structures, we have built-in data structures and user-defined data structures as well. And within the built-in data structures, you will have integer, we have float, we have character, and we have pointer as well. And uh, within the user-defined data structures, we have arrays, we have lists, and we have files as well. So if you consider lists, we have linear as well as non-linear lists. And within the linear list, we have stacks and then queues as well. But with non-linear list, we have trees and graphs. This is the classification of data structure. So, 
what is an algorithm of course you in the lower classes school days you would have studied about algorithm and flow chart okay so an algorithm can be defined as a finite sequence of instructions so which means everything each step has a clear meaning and it can be performed with a finite amount of effort in a finite length of time so which means the algorithm should be very clear to be understood by human beings but uh, in order to be executed by a computer we generally need a software program that has to be written in a maybe a computer understandable language or maybe a machine level language so this computers you know are you know uh, completely you know uh, flexible in design when compared to the human mind and uh, you know the programs need to contain more details than the algorithm so you should uh, make the programs in such a way that the computer should try to understand the logic behind the program but here we shall ignore some of the programming details and uh, you have to just concentrate on the design of the algorithms rather than the programs that you are trying to code so this is all about algorithm so within the algorithm uh, or maybe rather than the computer programs that you try to implement there are two types of programming we have imperative programming and declarative programming so in the case of imperative programming here uh, we have several tasks of implementation so we have to concentrate both the theoretical aspects as well as the programmatic concepts as well okay so we have to write down the segments of the actual programs you have to clarify you have to test the theoretical aspects of the algorithms and the data structures which means we are left with two types of programming one is imperative programming and another one is declarative programming with the imperative programming we have computation in terms of instructions that change the program or maybe data state whereas in the case of declarative programming it uh, specifies what the program should be able to achieve without describing how to do it okay so that's the reason many of us will be relying completely on the imperative program next we have the pseudo codes pseudo codes means uh, something that you try to cipher something that you try to code it in such a way that uh, uh, a third person cannot understand it but uh, you can still maintain the communication between one to one okay so here the algorithms you write it in english okay so for computer scientists it is usually very easier very clear to use something that comes somewhere between the format in english and the computer program because the thing is that we write in simple english but computer should be able to understand its form so uh, some way between the how we write and how the computer understands that uh, uh, should be a pseudo code okay so pseudo code we have like different forms we have like different segments that are similar to the languages even with the case of uh, popular programming language called c or maybe java it should be written in some form that uh, you also try to understand computer also tries to understand so this is pseudo code so there are fundamental questions of algorithms so if you are given with an algorithm then you should ask this question okay don't simply write algorithms okay right ask some questions okay what is it supposed to do does it really do what it is supposed to do okay and how efficiently does it do okay so what is the main objective of writing this algorithm what is uh, the main task okay that it is supposed to do and how efficiently it does that these questions you should ask them okay so when it comes to another uh, 
you know the fundamental questions of algorithm we have to keep in mind three important characteristics one is specification second is verification and third one is performance analysis for example if you are trying to write any code so you should have some specifications what are the variables that are present okay how we define them okay so these what is what you call it to be specifications for example if you are trying to build a project what are the tools that are available what is the software that is needed what is the hardware that is needed this is specification and then verification you verify you check with the test results okay you check with the test results and finally performance analysis how your tool is performing what input you are giving what output you are getting so this is performance analysis okay and how your method is performing in comparison with the existing methods okay so that things you should have a note of it okay only then uh, you can check you can make sure that the algorithm is working properly okay so when it comes to you know the uh, specification uh, we have uh, you know uh, specific details specific details about the problem that the algorithm is intended to solve and uh, sometimes it will be based on a particular representation of the associated data and uh, definitely it will be presented more uh, in a abstract fashion okay. so which means that you have to specify how the inputs and outputs of the algorithms are related for example if you have an algorithm maybe you should start the program you should input some variables you should process it maybe you have a formula and then finally you print the result okay so you should specify how the inputs and outputs of the algorithm are related okay and there is no general requirement that the specification is complete or it is not complete okay but for simple problems you can see that a particular algorithm will always work and it satisfies its specification so here when you take in the case of algorithm in most of the cases it should satisfy its specification but still it is uh, not a compelling thing okay it can satisfy or it cannot satisfy next comes testing after specification you have testing which means that you test on the inputs and you check whether the inputs are uh, being processed correctly okay so however since the number of the inputs is infinite and definitely we tend to use more inputs more than just testing on particular cases we make sure that the algorithm satisfies its specifications which means that we need correctness proofs we have to check for example in the class where you are studying maybe i will post some syllabus while i'll be posting some materials okay i'll be posting some independent works but at the end you have your exams and they will test your efficiency if you score well then you will score good marks which means the meaning is that you have studied really well so this is what you call it be testing so although we discuss about the proofs we discuss about several invariants normally we go it in a informal manner so that's the reason we go for data structures we go for algorithms and we discuss about the several techniques that are available so next what we are going to do we are going to test for efficiency so this efficiency for performance of an algorithm relates to the resources we are uh taking okay so how quickly it is running or maybe how much computer memory it will be using okay so definitely it de it depends about how complex is your problem or maybe how simple is your problem what data you choose to represent it and what are the details of the algorithm okay. so if you discuss about everything then uh, you can actually check for its efficiency you can check for its performance as well next we go into the uh, space complexity 
So space complexity, it's uh, nothing but the amount of the memory space that is actually required by the algorithm during the course of its execution. So space complexity, uh, it is generally uh, associated with the multi-user systems as well, where we have very, very less memory. Okay. So generally, if you take in the case of algorithm, it requires space for the following components like instruction space, data space, and then environment space. With the instruction space, it is actually the space that is needed to store the executable version of the program. So here we allot a space for the executable version of the program, but this space is actually limited. It is actually fixed, but it varies depending on the number of lines of code in the program. Okay. And also with the case of data space, we have a space that is allotted to store the constants and the variables. Okay. So it can be temporary variables or it can be permanent variables also. And then we have the environment space. It is actually the space that is required to store the environment related information in order to resume the suspended function. So that if there is any function that is not performing continuously, then we can store some, you know, some space for environment information. So similar to the space complexity, we have the time complexity. It's a way to represent the amount of time required by the program to run till its completion. So amount of time taken by the, uh, you know, the complete task to complete, uh, you know, to make its completion. Okay, so the basic criteria is that we have to keep this amount of time minimum so that we try to uh, execute it in the minimum time possible. So according to the input we have over here, okay, uh, we uh, process it according to the minimum time interval we are going to get the output. Okay, so corresponding to the given input, corresponding to the minimum time, we are getting the linear output. So this is space complexity of the algorithms. Whenever a solution to the problem is written, some memory is required to complete, which means we have like variables, we have program instruction and we have execution as well. So here, uh, uh, when you talk about the space complexity, you shouldn't confuse with auxiliary space because auxiliary space is a sub part of space complexity. So space complexity is nothing but auxiliary space plus the input space, which means that some predefined space should be there and then there should be input space. And uh, finally, the memory usage while execution. So while executing, the algorithm uses memory space for three reasons. We have the instruction space, which is nothing but the amount of memory used to save the compiled version of the instructions. And then we have the environment stack, which means an algorithm may be called inside another algorithm, which means uh, here in uh, the, no, the situations we use, here the current variables are pushed onto the system stack. Okay, So they wait for the further execution and uh, then they call uh, to the inside program. Okay, so uh, let us take an, an example. Maybe if there is function A and then there is function B. Okay, so function A calls function B inside it. Then all you know the end variables of the function A will get stored on the system stack temporarily, while function B is called and executed within function A. So that's the uh, scenario that we try to uh, you know, do it. Okay. So, with the environment stack, uh, we allot you know some good amount of in, uh, space for storing the in environment information. And uh, let us take a, a case where uh, function A calls function B. Then you know all the uh, you know, maybe nth variables of the function A will get stored in the system. Uh, stack temporarily while function B is called forward and then executed inside the function B. And then we have data space as well. So we just uh, the amount of space which is used by the variables as well as the constants.